Sherry here from Skinny Minks, and today we are going to be making sweet potato gelatins. I love sweet potato as a food, you know, as a snack, anywhere I can get it. And the reason is, back when I was doing competitive bodybuilding, I competed in the bikini division, which it's kind of, it's the girliest division there is. Um, you know, you want to have nice toned arms and legs and a flat stomach, um, and then a cute little caboose. Uh, so it's the division before you start getting into the uh, the larger, uh, more kind of actually classic bodybuilding looking women. And when you're carrying less mu muscle as a bikini girl, you can have fewer calories because the muscles are more metabolically active, they burn through more fat. So I'd see the little physique girls and they're able to eat like their rice cakes with peanut butter and I'd be so jealous because for a week or two weeks even, before a competition, the only thing that was allowed to pass my lips was plain chicken breast, completely plain, distilled water, and sweet potato. The reason is, is that yes, sweet potato is high in carbohydrates, but it is so complex that it actually takes about the same amount of energy to break it down to use as fuel as the fuel that's provided. It's kind of like how you hear like, you know, cucumbers and celery and some of these other vegetables are like a zero calorie food. It's a similar thing with sweet potato. So unless you're on a strict keto diet, uh, which is a completely different beast, um, then sweet potato is something that you want to include a lot of in your diet uh, because it is going to help you feel full and slim down and burn that fat. So what I do with these is I don't want to just sit around and be eating a sweet potato. I mean, Jesus, I, I bake them, I boil them. You know, there's only so much you can have. <laughs> so, but these little sweet potato gelatins are a really nice, sweet snack that you can grab on the go, and they're super easy to make. So what I've got in the food processor here is one sweet potato. I boiled it, and I removed the skin. You do want to make sure you remove the skin. Uh, for this recipe and we're just going to blend it up so it's nice and smooth. Okay, so I have my pureed sweet potato here. You can also just use tin sweet potato if you don't want to take the trouble and time to boil it. But I like everything to be prepared as freshly as possible to get the maximum nutrient value. So we're just going to set this aside for a second while we prepare our gelatin mixture. Here I've got one cup. It's half a cup of lemon juice and half a cup of water. The lemon juice isn't completely, it's not necessary for this recipe, but I like the bit of the sour from the lemon to help balance out the sweet from the sweet potato. I'm gonna use mostly stevia to sweeten this, and if you've ever tried to use a stevia sweet potato mixture, you just do it straight, and it is like disgustingly sweet, like rank sweet, um, <laughs> not the good kind of sweet. So. What happens with the lemon juice is the sour from the lemon helps to balance out the oversweetness of the sweet potato with the stevia. You don't really want to do the sweet potato on its own without any kind of sweetener uh, because then it's with the gelatin it's a little too bland. It's not, it's just not very exciting to eat. Um, I'm cur currently trying to avoid sugar alcohols because what I've been reading about how they're processed, I don't consider them to be, you know, a natural food um, and I think it's best to minimize. The amount in the body. I'm going to use a tiny bit of inulin, but I don't want the calories from the inulin. So it is going to be mostly stevia sweetened, and the lemon juice helps to, to balance that strong sweetness. So I'm going to put out of my full cup of lemon juice and water, I'm going to put half a cup. So pour half of it into the KitchenAid here because I need to bloom my gelatin. And what that means is um, if you have a natural grass fed gelatin, then it isn't already prepared for you the jello gelatins and you need to let it uh, sit mix it up into cold water and let it sit for a bit um, so that it doesn't clump and it starts to activate and then you add a uh, hot liquid into it um, gel gelatin type foods are very easy to make except they are temperature sensitive um, and I found that it is quite important to do the right mix of hot and cold so I've got, this is a two tablespoon uh, coffee measure, and I'm doing two of those. So it's gonna be four tablespoons of gelatin into a half cup of mixed lemon juice and water. And I'm just gonna turn the KitchenAid on and blend this thoroughly and let it sit. Now I have my second half of the cup of water and uh, lemon juice. So I remember I started with one cup of mixed water and lemon juice, half and half. Put half of it in to bloom. 
with the gelatin where it's cool. It's mixed in, it's kind of like a paste. And the other half, I am going to heat up. Gelatin, it needs to bloom, but it's activated by heat. So this mixture of hot and cold is very important. Um, some people heat, put their gelatin in the cold water and then they heat it all on the stove top. But the problem is if you go over like, I think it's 165 uh, with gelatin, it denatures it and it doesn't gel. Um, so I don't like to take that chance. I found what works really well for me is to split it half and half and then mix them together. Uh, with the gelatin, I forgot to mention, if you're using the Great Lakes, I like the Great Lakes because, you know, it's pretty high quality, pasture raised, grass fed. I don't know if it's um, animal welfare approved. I haven't come across a gelatin that necessarily is. Um, although I should do some more research into that. But either way, if you're using the Great Lakes, make sure you use the orange container. A lot of people don't mention this in these videos, and I was trying to make gelatins with the green container, which doesn't gel, and I didn't know that, and I had all these batches of jellies uh, not turning out until I came across it in someone else's uh, pot. So make sure you use the orange if you're using the Great Lakes. I'm just heating this up, and into my warm mixture, I'm gonna mix my sweetener. So I'm just going to use one uh, dropper full of stevia. I am not good at measuring drops. I'm not an exact person like that. So one dropper full is fine. Um, I'm going to pour in a bit of vanilla. I'd say about a teaspoon of vanilla and just a dash, like a tiny dash of, I'd say like a quarter teaspoon each of cinnamon, nutmeg, and ginger. I don't want this to be a strong uh, pumpkin pie type taste. I'm just adding a bit of spice to give it some complexity and again it's to help counter uh, some of the sweetness from the stevia. Also going to add just the tiniest pinch of salt and we are going to do two tablespoons of inulin. I don't want to go too much into the inulin. I don't want the calories from it. I want to keep this as much of a pure sweet potato mixture as possible. But just a very small amount of the inulin will help to balance out the stevia and give it like a, a more whole uh, sweet taste versus, uh, I don't know how to describe it, you know, if, if you do just the stevia of the sweet potato, it's like this empty saccharine sweet taste, which um, you just don't crave. So they're just the tiny little two tablespoons of inulin along with the lemon juice and the spices is going to help balance that out and give this a really nice full flavoring. So my liquid here is starting to simmer. Into that hot liquid, I'm going to add my uh, sweet potato. I think it's quite important to add in the sweet potato warm. I, I've done this before where I just threw the cold sweet potato into the uh, KitchenAid the same time as I did the hot liquid and it what I had happen was I think it was too much cold versus hot and the gelatin uh, when I went to pour it into the molds the gelatin had just clumped at the bottom of the KitchenAid um, and my unfortunately my mixture was ruined the texture was off so what I'm doing is I'm just lightly heating my blended sweet potato with my hot liquid and we're gonna add this all in together into the um, into the KitchenAid to process. Nice and warm here. Try not to burn my fingers. I should have brought some oven mitts up with me. I've got strong kitchen hands. <laughs> burn off those fingerprints. All right. And I'm just gonna mix that all together. Mix it really well uh, because you don't want any clumps. You want all of your mixture to. Uh, gel up nicely when you put it in the fridge. So now that I have my uh, sweet potato gelatin mixture, I don't know if you can see in there, it should just look like kind of like a liquidy batter, um, almost like a, a thin cake batter. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start pouring it into these molds. I like to use these little flower molds. They're cute. They're girly and they're about the right size to grab and just have a quick snack on my way out the door. 
try not to overfill. If I overfill one, I just scrape the excess into um, another indent here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to refrigerate these for, you know, probably like a couple hours just to be sure. Honestly, they almost gel on their own if you leave them sitting out. But um, I don't like to try and remove them too soon and, you know, have all my hard work, have it not be said and have all my hard work get broken. So. In general, I just try and make these ahead of time and I let them sit in the fridge for a couple hours and I'll show you the results. Hey y'all, so I checked on my uh, sweet potato jellies after about 40 minutes in the fridge and they were perfect and ready to go. just want to show you the plate here. We got some really fun, cute uh, little hearts and flowers. They're really satisfying visually. It looks like something you put a lot of effort into. but no, realistically, it only took about 15 minutes. Uh, so texture-wise, they, they hold together and they're a bit bouncy, springy like a jelly, but they have a so slightly softer texture when you bite into them. There's a bit more bulk to them because it's not just fruit juice. You do have the um, the fiber and the, the thickness of the sweet potato in there. Lightly sweet, lightly sour, and just a really great healthy snack to grab and go. So I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Check us out at Skinny Minks and let me know if you have any questions or comments. I'm here to help. Thank you and have a beautiful day.